So you're an artist and you want to have a big art gallery show in New York City? You got any money? Well, if you don't, there's another way. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Okay, you don't have to wait till the end of the show. I'm going to tell you right off the bat the two ways to have an art show in New York City. Number one is you pay for an art show. You could um, you could go to a co-op gallery where if you want to go to a fancy gallery, you pay a lot of money. If you want to go to another gallery that's not as big and you don't have to pay that much money. So uh, you could go to a co-op gallery and pay for a show. Or the second way you could get an art show in Manhattan and become very well known and to be the big hit of the 20s the big next thing is you do what I've been trying to do you try to come up with a new style of art that has never been seen before so you know every now and then I think I came up with this already where I try to come up with something that has never been seen. So I was doing some uh, different, you know, based on the fi- the figure where I wound up um, doing the, you know, I have this series of, since I'm a photographer, this is my series, which brings up another point. Now, you have to uh, have a consistent body of work. You have to have everything done in a series. So even though you have a lot of great artwork, you know, it could, what is it? It's in a landscape, there's some portraits, there's this. You have to kind of focus in on what you are about. What is your artwork about? What makes you different? What shows off your abilities? what not just what looks nice on the wall what looks nice uh over the couch which of course a lot of people paint for someone's living room or even a dining room kitchen bathroom you do artwork for bathrooms you have to have a body of work which is um consistent I mean, you could paint, I always worked for, not for the living room, but I always did my work for the gallery. I did a lot of these vertical, large paintings that don't even fit well in most living rooms, but they look good in a gallery. I owned a gallery when we were very young, I got into the gallery business. We were still, me and my friends were still, I was still in art school. I was an art student and I was going through the Village Voice one day and I see, oh, look at this store for rent, Soho, which was the center at the time of the art movement here in New York City. And so I find this store for rent, $900 a month. So I said to my friends, I said, look at this. It's right on Broom Street off Mercer in Soho, 444 Broom Street. Very high ceilings, kind of narrow, small, you know, not big. It was only like about 800 square feet or something, but very high ceilings. So we made a loft in the back and we opened our own gallery. It was previously, it was a Celsa factory. So we called it the Seltzer Gallery. I, I was responsible for half of the bills, half of the rent and electric. And then my two artist friends, Damien Janino and John Schoen, took the other half, 25% each. So I was the president. And we went along, artists would come in. You know, people would come in 
And so now we sort of just just went with the flow. Sometimes you just go with the flow. Did I make money? No, I didn't make money. I had my own art gallery, but I, you know, I was young. I was only like 22 years old. And we have, you know, we started this small business. And luckily it evolved and I ch- turned it into something. So I took the best artists that were selling or people that were really selling in my gallery. And then I decided, since I also, right after I opened up the art gallery, I actually bought a photography studio, which I still own to this day, John Warren Wright Studios. It's from the 1930s, and I took it over. And so I'm a photographer. And luckily, you know, studying art and going into photography was really terrific for me because I love photography. And so now my body of work is half photography, like I took these portraits. Now, okay, this is a portrait I took of Leo Castelli. Now, this is an art gallery in Manhattan, Leo Castelli Galleries, that's him. He was at an opening, I took this picture of him. I attached the photo to the canvas, then I paint all around it and over it a bit. So this is Leo Castelli, and that is, so let's look at galleries. That's, there's, in my opinion, there's three different types of galleries in New York City. I don't know about the rest of the world. There's thousands of galleries, and if you have not gone to the galleries underneath the High Line in Chelsea from um, maybe about 16th Street to 26th Street or so between the Hudson River and the next avenue. I forget what the avenue is, but the galleries are really not on the avenues. They're on the side streets, and the buildings, some buildings, every floor is full of galleries, could be 20 floors high, and all these art galleries in one building. So right now it's summertime, and they all close, the galleries close in Manhattan, and they follow the people out to the Hamptons, where whoever, if you have a gallery in Manhattan, you also have another gallery in the Hamptons, because most people that buy artwork, that have money, that live in Manhattan, also have a summer weekend house in the Hamptons that they have to buy artwork for that house too. So there's a lot of artwork being sold every single day in Manhattan. People come here from mostly for the, from the rest of this country. I don't think they come from Europe, but they do come from all over the world, but mostly from this country. Interior decorators come here to Manhattan to buy art. So I, when I was in the gallery business, I would get an interior decorator, you know, they would come in and it would always be a party, you know, they would be drinking and stuff. And they she, oh, do you have anything uh, blue, you know, to match like my couch or something, this couch? I, and you're ready to spray paint your artwork blue, you know. So you cannot really be influenced by trends, really, unless you're just starting out and then you should be influenced by the latest trends. But if you're in the middle of a series that you've been doing for years, what do you need to be influenced by other artwork? I mean, it's nice to be inspired. Go to galleries and museums. And and if you walk into these galleries in Chelsea, they're all new. They all switched over. They used to be garages that would fix taxi cabs and trucks. So you have these huge spaces, beautiful spaces, similar to the galleries like in California, where you have this big building, high skylights, beautiful. And they have this enormous, you know, you'll go into a gallery. And now that's the other way to become famous. If you go to, not, I shouldn't say famous, to become a successful artist or a professional artist is... If you go to the galleries in Manhattan and Brooklyn and go to a lot of galleries, not just go to one or two, 
but you will find something that you have never seen before. Constantly it's happening. It's been happening forever, for years, where you go into a gallery and it's like, that I've, ne- I've never seen that before. You know, like sometimes it's because there's new technology, say like uh, carbon fibers in automobiles now, lightweight, and you go into a gallery and you see carbon fibers, you know, sculpture. And it's like, okay. Um, So, but you'll always see something original. I mean, not in every gallery. You have to go to a lot of different galleries to find something original. But um, you go in and you see a lot of different things, a lot of galleries. You might, like, it might seem a little confusing, but you could walk into a gallery and you could see, like, a pile of bricks on the floor. And you're wondering, what is this? So, in my opinion, I, th- I feel like when I had a gallery, now it was summertime, it was off-season. We would have a group show because no one wants to have an opening in the summertime. You always want to have either September or some people like January 1st, you know, the first of the year, and you re um, you redate all your paintings for now. Like you just, you know, you just, that's kind of what you like. If you have a gallery and you go to galleries in January and you smell the paint is... You know, it smells like fresh paint, and now the the show has, you know, this year, it's only a, a couple of days old a year, but already they have dated, you know, that year. So, I mean, getting back to the different galleries. So there's the three levels of galleries. You have the blue chip galleries, like, say, the Leo Castelli Gallery. Now, these galleries have artists. They pay a lot of money for rent. And they have a well-established artists with them, big name artists that repeat. And so as long as these artists are still continuing to produce work, they continue with the same artist. If sometimes they drop out or maybe they're not selling and they're looking for a new, to bring on a new artist, then you're in luck. And if you have something that has not been seen before, you could get into a blue chip gallery. And you should go in and talk to the people in the galleries and show them your work. You go in and they'll be like an intern. Be sitting there, so, oh yeah, all right, intern. So uh, then, the, okay, I'll make an appointment. Can I make an appointment? And so a lot of times the gallery owner could be there and you can make an appointment and they're happy to come out and talk to you and look at your work. You can put it on a phone or a tablet, make it very easy for them to see the work. Then they could advise you what to do next. Where is the next step in your career? Which direction should you go into? My friends, a lot of my friends are photographers. They go to photography galleries. They're separate galleries for photography. And then there's certain galleries that have a certain style that might fit your work. Like, say, you want to find the galleries that, you know, whatever you're doing. If you're doing abstract expressionism, you're going to find that kind of gallery. If you're doing uh, super realism or, you know, hyper realism, there's galleries that, those are my favorite galleries that have the hyper realism. So it's a wonderful experience, very inspirational to go to you don't have to go for long I mean a lot of my friends that are not artists of course you know it's boring they don't want to go to galleries so I'll drag them into one or two but for if I go with my other artist friends there's artists and then there's art lovers which make up a big part of the art community you know, I know a lot of, because I'm a photographer, I do events, you know, I've even been to art events at Sotheby's, and you could go to these auction houses and view fantastic artwork. So that's another thing about New York. We, we sell so many works of art here in New York constantly. There's these auction houses that they, have, they move the artwork. It goes. And you could view it 
on the Upper East Side, I used to volunteer across the street. It was Sotheby's, and I would go in there all the time. The hours are even more, better than the galleries. And then we have fantastic museums, of course. Friday nights, a lot of museums in New York are free. On, not only free on Friday night, they have music and entertainment. So you could go to the New Whitney if you like American art. I happen to like more European art. The Metropolitan and all the different museums. There's tons of museums. The Metropolitan, you could just give a donation, even though now that might be changing where New Yorkers only could give the donation, but I would always go to the Metropolitan Museum. And I, you know, a young art student, I couldn't afford $25, but you could give a donation, a dollar or whatever you want. Now, I don't know, it might have changed. But, um, so you, there's different types of tiers in the galleries. The blue chip galleries, where that's it. That's when you hit it big, when you're in one of those galleries. You make a lot of money. The galleries make a lot of money. The artist depends on your deal. Then you have the co-op galleries, right? So now you pay for your own show. You pay for the month's rent. That's what I turned my gallery into. I, I um, got the artist that was successful, and we each took a month. Or one artist was, was very successful. She took four months, and she took over the shares. She outvoted me, and she took over the presidency of the gallery, which happened to work out at the time. It was a little shocking for me. I got hostile takeover in my own gallery. But um, it worked out fine because she took four months. She wanted, you know, a big part of the year and took and bought up most of the shares. So it was fine. It worked out. And uh, I had my month still. I would have my art shows and we would have openings and invite people. And even the local uh, newspapers Art Speak was the paper, I think it was called Art Speak at the time. And uh, for my artists in the gallery, if they took out an advertisement, they would write a review and an article on you. So here you would have an art show, and the review would be in the paper with pictures that they would do for us, because they, I don't know, we were the local gallery in Soho and uh, the other galleries, like whatever. And so it was very helpful to my artists. If they paid for an ad, they got an article. So that looks very good in your portfolio and talk about it. And we would do press releases. Like I, once I went to uh, my cousin, he's a dentist. Oh, I saw you in Art in America. I go, I was in Art in America? Yeah, like we would just do a press release and say, okay, Paul Petronell is having his art show on, you know, September 1st or September 20-something. And we would send out press releases to all the media. They would print it for free. There's a lot of opportunities. As an artist, what, what did I do? I'm a photographer by trade. What I did as an artist when I was younger, I painted amusement park rides. I would go to Coney Island two hours on the subway, and I would go to Coney Island. My brother worked there. He used to uh, set up roller coasters. He's an engineer pilot. And so I would go to Coney Island, and at the beginning, I loved it. You buy the water amusement park and then you, some of the jobs are really fun like you get to work in these horror houses and these rides that you know you paint this whole ride with all different scales and stuff on it and each car would have to be painted like a roller coaster each car you know is painted and that's the fun part even though you're outdoors you know whatever it's not easy and, or indoors in these huge factories, uh, big buildings that, uh, you know, it's sort of, you know, with the chemicals and stuff, it's dangerous. I didn't like it. But it was fun to paint these rides. But most of the work was uh, lettering, sign painting. So that I didn't really care for writing these gigantic letters and 
you know, and uh, sign painting. It's like truck lettering. You know, you could do that too. You could paint signs on trucks. Years ago, custom paint jobs on automobiles and stuff like that. But now, where the work is, is in murals. So if you're an artist and you like to make big paintings, I always like to make the bigger the better. One of my friends also owns a company that builds uh, sets and he hires a lot of artists. So now they're painting like crazy murals in Brooklyn. If you go to Brooklyn right now, drive through the streets of uh, Greenpoint or Williamsburg, they call it, if you drive through Williamsburg, they're painting murals that it's then their works of art. They're beautiful, super realistic works of art. It's not like graffiti. It doesn't really have the look of graffiti because they they blanket the entire side of the building. So you have this huge two-story whatever mural that mostly painted with brushes. And when I tell you they're painting these murals constantly, I'm not really joking, like just drive down the street. Oh, there's a bunch of guys painting. Oh, oh what are they making? Oh, they're beautiful um, illustrations on, you know, bricks. And you get to the surfaces that, you know, but a lot of the artists, they don't really care about preparing the surface properly because then it peels and you get more work, you come back, and people graffiti over it. So you get more work when you have to touch it up. So they call you back to touch it up, and there's a lot of work in touch-ups of things, like fixing, of course, art restoration, Photoshop. So that's uh, what I do as an artist. And then as a fine artist, you know, you have to paint these pictures out of your passion for producing work you just have to produce work and nothing can stop you from producing your work and you hope that people want to put it in a frame and hang it up <laughs> on their wall so I know a lot of artists that a lot of artists that have art shows all the time so you can not only um, have an art show in a gallery you can have an art show in a restaurant. You could go around to different restaurants, especially like in Brooklyn, artsy neighborhoods, and any artsy type of neighborhood, and talk to the owner of the restaurant. And some restaurants have a running show all the time. Like, they'll keep it there for a month or so. And uh, some of my friends do that. They set up their work. and But... You know, it could get damaged. It could disappear. The restaurant or something could close up and everything is gone. You go back there and, you know, it's padlock. So you're taking a risk. So, but that's okay. Because it's better to have your work be seen by people than just, you know, sit around. But, of course, as an artist, you have the uh, pleasure of enjoying your own work. Like, who else? You know, someone said that to me. Oh, you're lucky you get to live with all your paintings. I go, oh, you know, I never thought of that. Yeah. I, you know, I feel that as long as I'm producing artwork, I'm happy. You know, I also play uh, instruments. You have to keep doing your work. And hopefully you have a job that could support your art because... It's not easy to make, it's obvious, I mean, it's obvious, it's not that easy to make a living at art. But I was very lucky that right out of art school, I went into photography. And that's another art too. Like if you're, um, especially if you're trained in art, you know, you could take pictures because you know about composition, yeah, and usually with photography, it's all about, oh, 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 you just see something and you're reacting to whatever's in the frame. So you're so used to, you studied art, art history is wonderful to study, of course. And one last thing I'd like to talk about is not only the New York City art scene, 
what's happening today. What has been happening in the New York City art scene, gallery scene, museums, for the past 70 years? So this has shifted over from Paris. I mean, it was in the par- it was in Paris in the 20s. It was huge with the Impressionists and all them, and all the crazy minimalists and the you know in Europe and the Bauhaus and everything. And then with modern art, everything evolved from from uh, the craziness of the 20s into the 50s, well, there was the war, and then after the war in the 50s, modern art, abstract expressionism became huge, and so we had all our painters here in New York, and a lot of people left Europe because of the war, came to New York, and um, so now we had the start of this whole brand new movement before I was born in the 50s. Jackson Pollock and all these very cool uh, abstract you know, conceptual artists to this day it's still modern let's face it the artwork of the 50s all that modern artwork you know, not non-representational not a landscape really could be you know could be not a portrait you know not an object no objects just abstract is still modern today yeah we can't talk about the New York City art scene without talking about the culture and the culture on the street back years ago St. Mark's Place and the kids and the music and whatever was happening if you wanted to be the next Andy Warhol look what he did he did something that was never seen before like who else made brillo boxes you know and campbell's soup cans no one else did that every important person in art did something for the first time so and that was for i actually saw andy warhol three times you would see him out and about we saw him in nightclubs and he actually took a picture of me because i had this outfit on i had a pair i had like a white wife beater shirt and white jeans that i spray painted with acrylic paint. I put acrylic paint in water bottles and I spray painted brown and gold and I outlined stuff with markers and I wore the short the shirt a lot but I never wore the pants and I figured well we went out to the it's called Webster Hall now and we were in the VIP room and I had this crazy outfit on you know all paint I was covered in paint <laughs> And he turned around. I was with my friends. He turned around. Boom. And he took a picture of us. So very nice guy. You know, but the New York culture at the time, everything evolved. Now it's a, it's a hype. I mean, art is selling like crazy. What, who was the top uh, selling artist? Damien Hirst in, from England. I don't even want to describe his work. But you could look it up. He gets millions of dollars in auctions. They, his work sells in auctions a lot. So New York is about modern, something never seen before. It's very expensive expensive to have an art show so you better your work if your work sells you have no problem so you have to promote your work you have to show your work on make up a facebook page like i have a separate facebook page paul petronella paintings that i have a long time and you put your your photos up and then also we didn't talk about i'm sorry i'm taking a long time we never talked about online galleries. Now everything is online. Go to the galleries. The girls are in there. The guys, the interns are all on computers looking at, I don't know, they must be looking at their competition is online galleries. So some online galleries 
will accept you. And then others are more snobbish, like a gallery should be, and only select a certain amount of people and a certain quality that fits their style of their gallery. So there's a couple of galleries online. I'm not sure the names. Um, you could look them up online galleries and you, you could look at the reviews and see um, some take uh, a third whatever the price is of you you could price your own work I guess you would have your own website you price your own work they get a third of it and sometimes they have a sale so you have to be prepared if they want to have a sale you have to reduce the price of your work so some people so you have to have an idea of how much your paintings or sculpture or is worth or artwork my work it takes me so long to do these paintings I mean I can't really let them go for less than at least a couple of thousand bucks you know I'm not gonna just say okay here it is 300 you know it cost me not a lot. Of course, the, the beauty of it, it doesn't cost you a lot of money in supplies, right? Art, well, art supplies are cheap. Michaels has sales all the time. And you, you know, but it takes, of course, a lot of time. So, and if you enjoy it and you want to keep it, the price is high. If you want to sell it, the price is lower. And so uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. So I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.